Hi everybody, this is Dr. Paul here, and we're here to talk about ethics and principles of Reiki. I'm a naturopathic doctor practicing in Calgary. I focus on autoimmunity, infectious disease, autisms, digestion, detoxification, cranial work, and I use a lot of nutrition, homeopathy, biodynamic osteopathic manipulation, acupuncture, drainage, hydrotherapy, and herbs in my practice, as well as Reiki. Reiki ethics, um, this is a pretty big field. Uh, many times people who are learning Reiki, this is the first kind of uh, medical work that they're learning for, are they're learning. So I am, I think it's important to discuss Reiki ethics in the context of uh, healing ethics in general. So there's four basic principles in all kinds of healing work, and those are beneficence, autonomy, justice, and non-maleficence. So we're gonna go through each of these. Beneficence is the desire to do good, to aid the patient, and to provide for their best good. Generally, with Reiki practitioners, this is why we're doing this in the first place. So this is not really an issue that I think we need to get into. Autonomy. This is a big issue. We need to get informed consent and respect that informed consent of the patient, of you know their desires for their own future and everything else like that. When we're doing treatment on somebody, we need to describe the treatment. With Reiki, we are just laying on of hands. A bit of a, a healing energy flows through us, and it should benefit them. We need to describe the risks and benefits. Usually there's very few risk with Reiki. Sometimes people can get a little bit of a healing reaction. Sometimes they can get a little bit of a detoxification or some diarrhea. Explain this beforehand and get explicit permission. Um, just kind of a no, them not saying no is not enough. You need, you know, yes to get them. If this, per if the person is not capable of communication, they're in a coma or perhaps they're non-communicative in a way that we can understand, um, get consent from their guardians and caregivers. And if they say no, respect that. This goes for in-person healing and also distance healing. Justice. This principle is mostly defined by the principle that just that care, any kind of healing, should be equally distributed. I think that's very true. We need to distribute all these things as widely as possible, which is why I provided this group and which is why I'm providing all this training for free. So, you know, keep in mind with that. Um, you know, don't, everyone needs access to healing, so we need to be just in our provision of it, all right? And non-maleficence, the idea to do no harm. Reiki, this is not a huge issue. Reiki is inherently harmless. There might be some harm if Reiki is implied instead of another needed intervention, like emergency care or insulin or an EpiPen, but um, outside of such situations, there's really relatively no harm that can result from Reiki. So, the Reiki principles are a different thing than the ethics of healing. Reiki was started by Mikao Yusui as a path to enlightenment. It was done through healing, certainly through healing work, but also through ethical conduct meditation. Um, there's a set of principles that practitioners were encouraged to ponder, meditate on, and eventually absorb. His work was a system towards enlightenment, one of many um, in, J in Japan in the early part of the century. Now, several versions of these principles existed until this photo was discovered. So that is Mikao Yusui. And up at the top left, those are his principles written out in kanji. I can't read kanji to translate them personally, but they, they have other people can and they've translated them. So this is like, this is, if anyone wanted to dispute what was put down, that is that. Also, we have, this is Mikhail Yusui's uh, memorial. It was erected by his students afterwards, uh, after his death in the 20s and it contains an account of his life and also another wording of the Reiki principles. So, we're good. We know what they were. These are the principles in kanji. And here are the principles of um, that photograph with, with Mikhail Yusui translated. The secret method of inviting blessings, the spiritual medicine of many illnesses. Basically saying, this is a wonderful method. This is his method, which is primarily ethical, starting out and later transitioned more into the hands-on healing. Just for today, do not worry. Just for today, don't anger. Just for today, be grateful. Just for today, work diligently. And just for today, be kind. 
evenings and mornings sit in gaso, which is, you know, we'll discuss in another video the gaso pose, and repeat these words out loud in your heart. For the improvement of by mind and body, the Usui spiritual healing method, or this translated as the Usui Reiki Ryoho, the founder of Nikau Usui. There you see this photograph. So that's the rough translation. There's likely, of course, me being the anthropologist, there's nuance and everything else in the translation from kanji to, um, to English, but this is the gist of it. These principles were likely based on the precepts of the Meiji Emperor. This was um, in the formative period of Shinto nationalism, and the emperor was viewed in this period as an enlightened divine being with great weight and authority placed upon his words. I'm in Canada. The queen often fulfills this role, but not nearly to the same degree. Like, you know, the queen has moral authority and everything else, but she does not have the authority that the Meiji emperor and the Shinto nationalist emperors had. This unfortunately reached its apogee in the nationalist government and a World War II under Emperor Hirohito, who is actually the Meiji Emperor's grandson. So this grew and grew into something quite horrific. But still, the basics of the Meiji Emperor's poetry, which was often, like, there's a collection of poetry, um, and the ethical system, which is likely based upon the Meiji Emperor's influence, there's still good stuff in there, despite how this turned out. So I would encourage students to study these principles and to really not just study them intellectually, but feel them. In that light, there's a modern technique which is created by James Deacon, and it's at this website. I'll post it in the, in the description. We will go through it in a future video because you need Reiki 2 to really fully experience this technique, but it is a good technique. For now, chant these principles twice, day, twice daily. Incorporate it into your daily Hatsure Ho. Feel the principles. There's an energy to them. Look at an image of the principles or the Gokai, and that, or particularly that photograph of Mikau Yusui, can be very helpful. Feel, don't think. That is the way to incorporate these principles into your life. So just feel the energy. Do you have any questions about this? Uh, you can talk to me uh, um, in the comments on this video. You can talk to me in the comments on my in the uh, group, and you can give me an email on. There is my website if you wish to check it out. I will talk to you soon, my dears. Take care. Bye.